So how about that? The Bulls beat a bad team. They actually closed out a game and didn't blow a big lead, although I'll be honest, I was getting a little nervous when the Bulls opened up a 17-point lead and the Hornets came roaring back to cut it to 7 points multiple times throughout the fourth quarter. But then... When it did go under four minutes, the Bulls did what they needed to do. They let the Hornets score, but both teams kept trading baskets, which enabled the Bulls to maintain their lead. And hey, they didn't make careless mistakes in the final minutes, as we have seen them do a lot lately. It also helped that LaMelo Ball got a little heated and picked up two tees to really seal the game. But even without that, the Bulls were on their way to winning this one. And what's crazy about this game is that Zach Levine... And DeMar DeRozan had very poor shooting nights, as well as Patrick Williams. Vucevic also struggled shooting from three, but overall had a decent game. This game was really won by solid plays from Io DeSumo, Kobe White, and Andre Drummond, who have needed big games like this, especially Io, who has struggled over the past month or so, ties his season high with 22 points on 9 for 10 shooting, was very aggressive in getting the basket, playing downhill more, choosing his shots wisely, cutting to the basket when playing off the ball, and he was also really strong defensively, just a solid game from Io, one of his best so far this season. And then Kobe White, you know, say what you will about Kobe, who knows if he'll still be with the Bulls beyond the trade deadline, I say it's probably more likely now that he will actually remain with the Bulls given the Lonzo Ball situation is seeming even more in doubt by the day to the point where we may need to start planning for a future without Lonzo. Not saying Kobe should be the Bulls starting point guard for the future, but if Lonzo isn't going to be able to play, you're going to need some additional backcourt depth. But anyway, Kobe tonight needed a big game from him when the starting lineup was struggling. 20 points tonight, 7 for 13, 3 for 5 from 3, 4 rebounds. He was a plus 19 coming off the bench with only 27 minutes. Can Kobe do stuff like this for the Bulls consistently? That's the biggest question. Now, I talked about Zach Levine a bit in the context of him and DeMar not really having the best shooting night, but Levine only had 10 points tonight, 3 for 8 shooting. But what was actually impressive to me about this game for Levine was how active he was defensively. Getting that strip, or I guess it was a block on the mellow ball after a bad Bulls turnover for what looked like a breakaway dunk from Lamella was incredible and what was also great to see which we've been seeing a little more recently from Levine not needing to take a ton of shots he only took eight shots tonight well below his average he wasn't trying to force things because he wasn't getting the touches he's used to seeing no he played steady played smart for the most part and guess what only 10 points but finished the game plus 21 on the night which was a team high three steals and two blocks for Levine something you don't see very often Vooch another solid game didn't shoot the ball well from deep but seven for 14 overall Bulls worked him in the paint and exploited those mismatches down low when they could. 17 points, 12 rebounds, and 6 assists. And then DeMar, as I mentioned, not the best night for him on offense. Only 15 points on 4 for 12 shooting. Half of his made baskets were threes in this game. When Have you ever heard something like that from DeMar? DeMar also had 7 assists, a steal, and 2 blocks. Also, a huge shout-out to DeMar DeRozan for being selected to his 6th All-Star game. Back-to-back -back seasons for the Bulls. Have to say I'm a little surprised by this selection. Not saying DeMar doesn't deserve it because he's still still having a phenomenal season like the dude is putting up over 26 points per game on 51 percent shooting to go along with five rebounds and five assists he's having an all-star type season just a little surprised by the selection in that the team record does usually impact a player's all-star nod and the bulls haven't been very good as we all know and there were some players left off the list that i thought the coaches probably would have selected over demar like james harden or even jimmy butler or even pascal siakam even though the raptors are an even worse team than the bulls at this point anyway I'll likely have some sort of all-star snub video on my NBA channel in the coming days discussing this in more detail, but as a Bulls fan, I like it, I'll take it, and I'm happy for DeMar. Zach Levine didn't get the nod this year, which he kind of had to expect given the slow start he had this season. Also, again, the Bulls record doesn't help. Hopefully getting left off the list lights a little fire under Zach to ball out for the rest of the season. The other couple calls from this game, Patrick Williams didn't have the best game, but did have that big three for the most part that iced the game in the fourth quarter, but then went down with that tweaked ankle with about three minutes left to go in the game, didn't return after that. He went back to the locker room initially, but then came back onto the court. Bulls didn't bring him back into the game because by that point, it was a pretty comfortable lead and the game was pretty much over, but not something you want to see when you've been seeing a lot of progress and improvement from Pat recently. It sounds like it's nothing serious. Pat himself in a post-game interview said he just tweaked it a bit and should be fine. Alex Caruso, on the other hand, 
Also had to leave the game early, ended up only playing 7 minutes due to a right foot sprain, and at the time of me recording this, we don't have a status update on the severity of that injury, which fingers crossed, hopefully it's nothing as you really need one of your best defenders out there. It also doesn't help his trade value in the event the Bulls are looking to get a team looking to overpay for Caruso in a trade, but I kid, I don't want Caruso to be moved, I want him to stay with the Bulls, as his defensive impact is really invaluable on a team that really needs defenders, so hopefully Caruso is okay. And then the other piece from this game how about Andre Drummond dude has been out of the rotation in trade rumors the last week which I can't for the life of me figure out I'm not saying he's a great player that he should be getting starter level minutes but he's one of your few bigs and he crashes the boards and brings energy maybe not all the time but most of the time he brings energy in that second unit Props to Drummond for always staying ready and not getting down on himself for being out of the rotation. I think Donovan realized he screwed up in the last game against the Clippers when he kept Andre Drummond out of the rotation in the first half, which enabled the Clippers to come back down 19 points in just five minutes because the Bulls sat Vucevic and didn't have an answer for Zubak. Donovan corrected that mistake and had him play in the fourth quarter over Derrick Jones Jr. and he played decently well. Tonight, Drummond plays 15 minutes. Puts in 15 points and 11 rebounds, including five offensive rebounds. Again, something the Bulls have struggled with and was throwing down dunks and getting the crowd into it. I love Derek Jones Jr., but let the big man play, especially when you don't have a ton of size on this team. So anyway, good to see Drummond get some run. Who knows? Maybe he still ends up getting moved by next week. We'll see. Pretty crazy that the trade deadline is a week away and we have yet to see any meaningful trades outside of Hachimura getting shipped to the Lakers. will be interesting to see if the Bulls roster will look any different by this time next week. Either way, I will have some trade scenarios and content coming out this week leading up to the deadline. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.